Jeep Talk Holland Show, episode 30. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Who are you going to call? So when you want to call, you dial that number. Call! It's the Jeep Talk Show Call In Show with Tammy and Tony. They're going to be talking Jeeps with you. There's no show without you, so call in now. Just make the call. Good call! That's the one calling now. Tammy, you know know I forgot something? Oh, what'd you forget? Podcasting since 2010. This is not the same without that. You want to start over? (laughs) No, go ahead. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. This is episode 33-0 of the Jeep Talk call Show. It's a show all about you. A chance where you get to share your Jeep experiences with us live. Each week we ask you a question, a Jeep-related question, and then we want you to call in and share your story. We love to hear from you, so please give us a call. And you can call right now, 302-202-1110, and you just punch in the code 219-835. I'm Tammy over here on the East Coast studios of the Jeep Talk call Show. And joining me every Tuesday night here from the Jeep Talk Show headquarters is Tony. So, hey, Tony, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing fine, doing fine. I, uh, I'm digging out of all the uh, multiple layers of snow that we've had over here in uh, South oh, yeah. Texas. Uh, I think we got 37 feet of snow, which uh, everybody knows <laughs> that would be about uh, 3,700 3, inches of rain. So. No, it's actually it's the other way around. It'd only be about three and a half, about three and a half inches of, of actual rain. Yeah, I was uh, asking Tammy because Tammy's in that general area, the general vicinity where they were uh, predicting what was it, Snowmageddon or? Uh, no, it was Bombogenesis. Bombogenesis. But he's he's only been out of office for a few months. Why don't they leave the poor man alone? See what I did there? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> it was it was a dud, an absolute dud. Well, it most all it most often is. I don't know. Yeah. It's just stupid. They keep crying, crying wolf. People are going to stop buying uh, uh, toilet paper, and bread, of, and milk. It, exactly. I mean, yeah. and, and I've never understood. That must be an East Coast thing. What kind of thing do you make with bread and milk? I mean, French toast? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I can see know. French toast. But yeah, anyway. So, hey, yeah. we got a guest tonight, Tammy. Uh, I am so excited. Against yeah. all odds, we have another guest. <laughs> it's, we, we're doing good. Is it what? Four in a row now, I think. I think I lost count. We've had so many. Uh, well, the, and they've all been excellent, but this one tonight yeah. will be the best. I, I, I know. So, uh, Brian from uh, uh, Carolina. No, you just have Carolina on there. It's uh, North Carolina. Oh. Or is it Carolina right. Trails? I think it's Carolina Trails Off Road. Ah, well, let's see. Well, I've, he can he can let us know. I've been misinformed. Now, you you were correct. I actually have a little logo here. Let me. Uh, let me plop that up on the screen. Yep, now I can read. Carolina Trails Off-Road. See, I was thinking he was in North Carolina. Uh, the, 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 I, the think they're doing a, I think they're doing an event in North Carolina. Maybe that's why. All right. Well, let's see if we can get Brian in here to uh, uh, either add to or take away from the confusion. Brian, thanks for joining us tonight. Hi, thanks for having me. So, so uh, Brian, is it North Carolina Trails Off-Road or is it Carolina Trails Off-Road? It's Carolina Trails Off-Road. And what would yeah, it? I was right. What would it take to make it red? Carolina trails off road. <laughs> Tammy, Brian, do code? not don't listen to him. <laughs> Tammy's shaking her head. Funny, the the event logo actually is red. Ah, well that okay. that that needs one of these. Yes. <laughs> so Brian, um, do you want to tell us um, a little bit about Carolina Trails Off Road Jeep Club? Well, a friend and I bought a couple of Jeeps. We had trucks previously for a while, and um, actually met the fellow through a Jeep form, and we started going to places like URA National Forest and stuff like that. And he had the idea. He said, hey, man, you should set up a Jeep club and get other people around the na- in the area to come wheel with us. He said, there's got to be other people that want to go and just don't know how to get it in touch with anybody and everything. And so I did. Um, started a Facebook page, kind of put some feelers out on the forums. And next thing you know, we got a bunch of people showing up every month to 
meet with us and we're setting up trail rides and it's just a really it's turned into a really good thing we're able to network with other wheelers and i don't know how many lift kits i've helped put on local in the area and stuff like that <laughs> oh I've wow so it's, it's turned into a really good thing so before we continue on with the um the jeep club what kind of jeep do you have and more importantly what color is it I've got a 2014 JK and it is white. Oh, okay. I can, I can accept that as long uh, as it's not red. I'll give him one. There you go. So, um, how long ago did you trade in your Jeep for your truck or your truck for your Jeep? Right. Yeah. Oh, I guess it's been three years now. Okay. I've had, so, I've had trucks before and, and being from South Carolina, there really isn't a lot of, rocks and stuff around here we usually just played in the mud and um got to travel a little bit in the military and see some things and and i decided that i wanted a jeep and haven't looked back since so with your club do you just let everybody in do you like open it up to everybody in south carolina or i mean is it is it a, like a four by four club or mainly just Jeeps? It's, it's four by four, side by sides, whatever people bring, whatever people's got. Um, not limited to any type of region or area. Um, really, is is it'll go as big as it goes. It, it doesn't really matter. I'm more of a moderator than I am uh, a president over a club. I, I want the people to be the ones who kind of drive it in the direction that it's going to go. It's more about resource, being a, being a resource and networking for off-roaders. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're a tread lightly um, friendly club and, and just, it's just different. I wanted to do something different. I don't want to have dues and a treasurer and <laughs> um, all these rules and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's family friendly. Keep it, keep it right. Follow tread lightly stuff. We're on the trails and everybody's happy. So uh, I, uh, I've kind of uh, made this comment on the show before. I've always kind of had a, uh, a problem with clubs, uh, not really the club itself, but it always seems like there's uh, one, two, ten people that kind of screw it up for everybody else. And uh, I actually uh, always uh, tell people to stay away from clubs just because they usually tear themselves apart. Uh, have, uh, how, how do you guys handle this? I mean, I know you have a bunch of people that you have to deal with, uh, I think uh, the the few rules that you're talking about is one way to handle that. But uh, how, how do you keep this club from destroying itself? It, you know, it's it's not like a a regular sanctioned club or, or or set up. We're just a little bit different. We're more like a kind of take like a Jeep form, like JK form or Wrangler form or something like that. Mm-hmm. But bring it into perspective and, and, and take the social media aspect out of it. The social media part of the club is more just a way of us to get the word out where we're going to be, when we're going to be there. And I'm pretty peculiar about weeding people out on the <laughs> forum if I see some things going on I don't like or I see some people saying some things I don't like. You know, I'll, I'll take them out of that resource where they're not, they don't really know what's going on at that point. Um, the big thing is a lot of us have kids, we have families, we work Monday through Friday. We're grown people, we don't have time for that kind <laughs> Exactly. Of stuff. Yeah. Exactly. This is a, it's a it's a hobby, it's a it's a passion. It's something that we do because we love to be outside, we love to do it. We're trying to preserve our resources and if like minded people aren't there, it's people that are trying to be destructive. I don't I don't deal with that kind of stuff. It's not my thing. Have you guys had much problems with uh, alcohol uh, in as much as uh, too much of it? No, not a single time, thankfully. Excellent. Um, this That's... is our. We got an event coming up, our second one, and um, you know, some some of the guys drink, but they know that there's a line, and we follow the rules wherever we're at, which most places don't allow alcohol and stuff like that, and uh, it's just kind of how we do it I mean, it's it's hard to keep everybody in line i guess you might say but we haven't had a problem I and mean, eventually i guess you're gonna have a problem 
drive down the road long enough, you're going to get pulled over and get a ticket. But um, so far, we've done a pretty good job the way we've been doing things without having to deal with that kind of stuff. Um, so you said you're having your second event. What kind of events um, do you guys put on? So last year was obviously our first one. Um, it doesn't cost a dime for raffles or anything like that. Last year was completely free. Um, this year we're charging 10 bucks for trail rigs, and that just covers uh, camping. We decided to go ahead and book a group campground in the Yari National Forest in uh, Troy, North Carolina. And we'll hold about 40 rigs, so we cut it off at 40. We had a, a 20 rig limit last year, so we're, we're doubled this year. And we got some really great sponsors. Um, Route 16 is one of them. He's actually done a tremendous amount of help in the short time he's been on board with it to help us out. Um, Terraflex, Rancho, we got some pretty big names. Super Winch is going to send us a winch to raffle off. Wow. Awesome. So, Very awesome. It's pretty I'll tell you what, it, for I've been in a lot of, had my hands in a lot of different things from outdoor and outdoor recreation world and off-roading vendors and, and manufacturers really are some of the most supporting ones. It's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, they I've uh, been to a couple events. Yeah, I've been to a couple events myself and it's just amazing the amount of product that gets raffled off at all these different events that you see, even on Facebook and um, Instagram and Twitter. It's just amazing, the aftermarket companies, how great they are. It really is. They, they really do a lot for the sport. I know they're in it to make money. In any business, they're in it to make money, but some of these manufacturers, like the ones I mentioned, really go above and beyond. They, they really mm-hmm. do care about the sport. They're, they're ran by people that wheel themselves and that makes a big difference so this place where you're um gonna wheel what kind of um trails are there this a lot of rocks <laughs> it's uh <laughs> it's uh the yari national forest the yari mountain chain um it's by the baden lake recreational area um, it's got a little bit of everything we're actually running two trail groups I did this last year, and it was a really, really big success. One of one of my target areas is intermediate novice drivers, stock Jeeps. Um, mm-hmm. I really enjoy getting people out there in rigs that have been lightly modified and showing what they can actually really do. And show them that you can wheel responsibly and not break stuff, too. <laughs> and that helps them a lot, teach them basic recovery skills and things. I think some people get out and they wheel, they break stuff because they're not sure what they're doing. Leaves a bad taste in their mouth and they never go back and do it again. Yeah, I've heard lots of those stories. They're fresh in it. They're new. Show them the right way to do it. Teach them some basic skills. Let them network with some other wheelers in the area that are knowledgeable. Teach them how to pick good lines based on how their rig's set up and their driving experience. They'll come back and do it again. Oh, yeah. Everybody likes to succeed. Everybody likes to succeed and everybody hates to fail, especially when you uh, yeah. you have to work on the Jeep uh, Sunday evening so you can go to work Monday. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. And the trails that we're on, they have everything from mild to wild. We get a, lot of, a lot of the longer trails are really pretty easy, um, but they're scenic and challenging enough for the average driver. Someone that hasn't done it before, especially, you know, they'll get they'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. The kids get a lot of enjoyment out of it. They bring their kids with them. Um, it's nice and shady, so even in the, in the hot part of the year, it's, it's pretty cool in the canopy. So. It's the world's harder stuff. It's the world's best and slowest roller coaster. So, how many members? I mean, I know you you have 40 rigs going to your event, but do you have more members than the, the people that are going? We're pushing right around 300. Um, wow. Usually one beat every month. We have, I think the most we've had is some around like 35 that make monthly meetings. We get some new faces just about every monthly meeting. Um, it's really not a meeting. It's more of a, 
a bunch of people getting together eating food and <laughs> telling some little white lies about their Jeep. But uh, uh-huh. other than that, you know, it's it's a reason to get together and and uh and have a burger and and talk and enjoy each other's company, um, fellowship with each other, show whatever you did to your Jeep last week, you know, what you broke, how you fixed it, that kind of stuff. We have a really good time at it. I said not organized they said we always say the same thing nothing else it gives us all reason to go out to eat once a month oh yeah so, real laid back a lot of fun so let me circle back to the uh the the super winch that's big that's uh getting giving given away do you know what model it is i haven't said yet last year they give us a winch to go and uh it's actually pretty neat i never heard of it coming to mail and i checked it out and like a winch in a box with all the recovery gear in it and everything, mobile winch system. This year we asked for a full size vehicle winch, so I'm expecting a 9500 up, something like that. Yeah, I would hope so. So, do you have any women wheelers that have their own Jeeps? They don't just wheel their boyfriend or their husband's Jeep. A few of them, a few of them, not not as many as I'd like to see, uh, but they're getting there. So. Uh, my opinion one of the more diverse sports as far as that goes rock mm-hmm. collins a lot different than some of the other types of wheeling uh, we've got a few that come on our monthly meetings every night they both uh, well one particularly has a pretty nice little jk um yeah we have a lot of fun with it it's, it's a good now time. will you guys be wheeling just one day this um event or do you guys wheel like the whole weekend We'll be there May 5th, that's a Friday, and we'll wheel that evening. We'll, the actual main events on the Saturday will start early in the morning and go to mm-hmm. the evening. Think about having maybe a winch and race. It just depends. I'm, I'm hoping I get some people that haven't used recovery equipment before. Factor 55 sent us a flat link, and I want to be able to demo that with some people that need some recovery Um insights and lessons and thoughts and haven't done it before we had that last year so i was kind of hoping for a repeat but if we don't get that interest and in, i'll raffle something off in the form of a winching race or something like mm-hmm. that so we'll see how it goes so let's go over the uh, the event that you have coming up where it's going to be uh the the dates again and uh you know who all is welcome um anybody's welcome they just got to sign up for it I've got a uh, a PayPal set up. It's a ten dollar fee. Again, it's on uh, our website, Carolina Trails dot dot uh, dot com, and uh, you come to a club meet and pay. It's the ten dollar fee just covers camping. Again, you don't have to camp with us to go, but it helps us recover money. We pay out of pocket for everything. I paid out of pocket for stickers. I paid out of pocket for the camping everything. It all come out of my wallet, so I'm just trying to get a little bit of my money back. Yeah, you um, should. So this is the reason why they wanted you yeah. to start the the club, Brian. They wanted you to yeah. pay for it out of your pocket. <laughs> That's probably what it was. It's working right now. But, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's it's coming along good. It's 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 been a good response. I'm gonna try to get some t-shirts made, and uh, anything else we get left over, we'll either go to Tread Lightly or Friends of Yari, and they're a uh, Friends Yard is kind of like a local trail lightly, but they're trail preservation, local trail preservation. We gave them some money last year to buy things to maintain the trails with and such. And um, Tread Lightly is our, our off-road ethics sponsor for the event as well. And they're they're sending us a bunch of packets and info. They did that for us last year. And uh, I already told them, I was like, you know, if we get anything left over, we're going to either donate to you or you, Friends Yard or both. So, trying to take anything we get we're not trying to make anything off nothing we're just trying to spread the word and get things set up for us for the trails my son's so already got a, a jeep picked out so i gotta make sure they're open when he gets older <laughs> so on a personal note which um what kind of wheeling do you prefer the mud or the rocks you know, the only time I ever broke anything was in mud. So wow. I don't go in mm. mud anymore. I, yeah, I don't I like rocks. <laughs> yeah. 
now, when you were in your truck, were you able to um, do any rock wheeling in your truck? No, there's, I didn't even think about it. I stayed in uh-huh. mud, and I stayed with broke axles all the time. So. <laughs> oh. So yeah, you said just, you, I like you rocks said, now. Yeah, you got your Jeep three years ago, so you've only been doing the rocks for like three years, or have you wheeled rocks before? I've only been in the rocks three years. Um, I've trail ridden and, and done mud bogs and things like that, but as far as actually in the rocks and the ledges, yeah, about three years. Wow, that see, that's that's about as long as I've been doing it, and you sound so much more knowledgeable than me in being able to to wheel those rocks. I guess it's a matter of confidence. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I got some really good people that we go with, and I've learned a lot from them. Um, mm-hmm. That's probably a big contributor right there. Do you go a often? Lot of experience in our in our group, and they do a really good job, and we've learned a lot. And uh, done my research too. I didn't want to go buy a brand new Jeep and go out and, and destroy it in rocks. You know, I wanted to I wanted to know what I was doing. I wanted to build my Jeep where I wasn't having to throttle through things that just crawl up it nice and easy. Right. So, Brian, uh, over the, I guess, two years that are going on two years that you guys have uh, been in, in existence, are there any uh, any stories that uh, stick out, anything uh, very interesting that occurred that you uh, might want to share with uh, us and, and our audience? Well, honestly, nothing too too far off the wall. Um, we've seen some guys bury their rigs in a, in the mud pit down in New Ari. Um, I wish I wish one of my other club members was here to tell the story. He was there. He told it one night. I guess <laughs> a guy bought a brand new Jeep. One of those little Jeep, not Compass, but the newest one, the Renegade, I guess, is the one that just come out. Yeah. <laughs> this is already and, getting um, good. <laughs> I guess, yeah, the guy had it. It was brand new, had paper tags on it. <laughs> And I guess oh, he was geez. driving, and it was his girlfriend's, and his girlfriend's girlfriend and a friend was in the little Jeep with him and stock tires and everything. And I guess he pulled up to someone over there by the mud pit and asked them if they thought that he'd be able to make it through the soup bowl. They call it the soup bowl. And they told him that he could. <laughs> and he got about part of the way through it. Oh. it. It was up over the hood, and it was not good. Oh, my God. <laughs> Some of our guys went over there and saw it, pulled him out, popped the hood, and they pulled the breather uh, off, and it was full red clay, and they looked at the guys like, man, this ain't good. <laughs> oh, I, think, I would have I been devastated. They helped them. <laughs> it was hot a lot. It, it was brand new. It still had dealer tags on it. <laughs> That's so, great. I wasn't there for that one, but I thought I'd share that. I love one the, of our guys. Will, uh, I love the part that it was his girlfriend's renegade. <laughs> <laughs> not his <laughs> you know and the the funny thing was i asked him i said did, did she tear his head up or anything like that when the record came to tow that thing and he said no she was real calm around us <laughs> so i'm wondering was... how that went when they got back that was yeah was, she probably led into him most curious about hey brian we've got a caller let's uh let's jump in here and see if uh we can uh, get this caller in. hey uh caller thanks for calling in uh i see that it's uh pat Hey, Tony. Hey, Tammy. How are y'all doing? Doing good. Hey, we're good. Did you have a question or a comment for I Brian? I think y'all talking a lot about rocks. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, do you have a question or comment uh, for Brian? Yeah, Brian, uh, if we were to get out there to North Carolina, um, how would I hook up with the club as a, maybe a visitor from out of state? Good question. You know, it's as, as far as our club goes, all you got to do is keep checking our website. We'll try to post up all our events. And I encourage all our people to, anytime they're going, even if they're just going on um, with one or two Jeeps, which, you know, you don't want to wheel by yourself. So that was one of the other reasons the club was created. You know, post up, say, hey, I'm from so-and-so. I'm going to be in Yari this time. And uh, somebody's bound to jump in with you and say, hey, we'll meet you down there. 
So like you always got a place called the El Dorado Outpost, and it's kind of like the central hub of operations. Most of the places that are um, set up for Wheeling have something set up like that, and we we have a pretty good pretty good setup for networking with other wheelers, and especially if you're if you haven't wheeled the trails before or something like that. And that's where we really get, we have a lot of fun with that. We have a lot of fun taking people on the trails and stuff stuff along those lines. Um, so our club's probably no different than any others. Um, you just got to watch some of them because some of them are very heavily modified rigs, and, and their expectation is to go down the hardest trails there are. So pick your uh, pick your trail group wisely. Right. Where else do y'all go in the Carolinas um, to go wheel? Um, is there any other place you like to go? There is. Um, there's a place that just opened up about an hour from here in the Florence called Broken Nut. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> they break stuff in there. They, they got some pretty wicked trails. But uh, Gulch's is probably one of the more famous ones. I think uh, Peterson's four-wheel drive off-road adventure went to Gulch's one time. Um, they've got some really technical stuff. They've got some fairly easy stuff. It's, uh, it's one of those places you don't go when it rains. No matter how well rigged your your outfit is, it's pretty tough in there. Um, Wind Rocks up around Tennessee North Carolina border, and Wind Rocks got about 350 miles of trails. Wow! It's one of the largest holy cats um, trail systems. It's huge. It's, it's beautiful. It's it's on my to do list. I haven't haven't made it up there yet. Some of our guys have. Um, there's there's a few Teleco used to be open. That's closed, unfortunately. You can still pull videos up the Teleco. Um, but when I've actually been out there years ago, I lived in North Carolina, and uh, I did not know that they closed. Yeah, Teleco's closed down, but Winrock's still open. Um, Brown Mountain's still open. So there's a lot of places you can go right in the general area. There's a couple good websites that you can look up the trail systems to that I cannot for the life of me uh, off the top of my head think of it, but. Um, it's like where to wheel dot com, I think. I don't know if Tony or, or Kimmy all heard of that, but uh Sounds familiar. Uh and Yeah, I've seen it on Facebook a lot. And, and Brian, you mentioned uh just check out the uh the website Facebook page about uh, the events. Uh, what what is that again? I'm sure uh Pat has it, but just in case somebody else uh, didn't have a chance to write it down. This uh it's the Facebook dot com with a forward slash groups forward slash Carolina Trails off road. Carolina Trails Off Road. Search Carolina Trails Off Road. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then the process for somebody that was uh, out of state uh, or not in the area, not not a member, they would just go over there and uh, contact you guys through the Facebook page. Yeah, they just post up, say, "Hey, I'm Pat from wherever I'm from, and looking to go to Uari National Forest on the date. If anyone like to tag along, or if I'm new to it, haven't been out there, I'd like someone to come out there and go wheel me with me." Excellent. And most of our members are from North South Carolina, Georgia, so you'll definitely get some hits. Okay. Well, Pat, thank you very much for calling in. We really appreciate the uh, the call in, and hopefully, uh, uh, you got your uh, your questions answered. So, if you guys are yeah. not uh, already aware, if you're uh, maybe you're not watching the the video, we we are taking calls right now. The number is uh, scrolling across the screen, but uh, just in case uh, you're not seeing that, I. Uh, fumbling here to try to find the number 302-202-1110 and then uh, dial the, the secret sauce number 219-835 and uh, we've got time for uh, just a couple of more uh, calls if you want to get the calls in otherwise uh, we're going to wrap her up so brian let's go ahead and go over uh, all the ways of uh, how people can contact you uh, or the contact the club uh, i don't know if you guys are on instagram if you're on the YouTube, Twitter, just uh, let's cover all those. We, we do. We have uh, Instagram, uh, Carolina Trails Off-Road, a Facebook page, and then, of course, our web page. And there's links to either the regular Facebook page or the web page on, on either or. So well, there's ways to get to both of them from, from various different links. And my phone number is actually on uh, both as well. Pretty easy to find. Excellent. I'm also on the forums as well. 
And when you say the forums, uh, which ones? Like JK Forum and Wrangler Forum. Um, I'm on there pretty regularly. Uh, uh, Carolina Trails off-road patches my avatar, so not hard to find. <laughs> is do you? Uh, is that who you go by on on the forums? Is Brian, or do you have a a, a special CB type handle name? It's funny you mention that. Um, so I grew up on the coast and. Well, I say I am. I used to be a pretty big saltwater fisherman. Ah. Uh, so my my uh, name on the forums is Tarpon for me. Is what tarp? Tarpon oh, for me. Tarpon for me. Oh, okay. It's for me, not for you. It's for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's for me. That's right. I went deep sea fishing once and I had a blast. Oh, it's, it's, it's I, a rush. I can see why you like the salt water. Did you actually go out in a boat or just there from the, uh, uh, from the shore? Talking to me or Tammy. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah, she went deep sea fishing. So she went in a boat. I'm, I'm yeah. curious about what, how you went to, how, how you would do the salt water fishing, Brian. I, I, I grew up doing both. We, we did a lot of offshore stuff. I think I got, I got kind of burnt out of it, my knees and my back, and getting up at three in the morning and getting back <laughs> yeah. at yeah. six, seven, and cleaning fish for two hours and scrubbing a boat. And oh, I'm see, getting I didn't to that age that. now where the beating and banging just don't doesn't work too well for me. That's almost as bad as uh, taking a truck mudding. You spend the next five hours cleaning the mud off of it. Yeah. Yeah, Are but there... that doesn't exactly beat you like someone's been whipping you with a a wet bat all day long. So, <laughs> you have some calm days, but more days than not, the weatherman blows the forecast and you get the snot beat out of you coming back in or going or both. So oh, okay. Make it for a long day. I got you. So uh, take a bit I'd of rather, a... I'd rather brim fish from the bank now. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. More relaxing. So let me take a left turn here. Now, uh, I'm over here in southeast Texas, close to Galveston, and it seems like uh, we hear... Uh, maybe once every few years or so, somebody gets the uh, flesh-eating virus from uh, doing the saltwater fishing. Do, do you have a similar type issue, or have they had similar type issues on the uh, the East Coast? Not that I've heard of. If, yeah. Had I heard of that, I probably would have moved away from the coast sooner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's these people, I, I'm sure you've heard about it on the news, but they get the flesh-eating virus from something in the the salt water it usually has to be pretty warm uh in the gulf oh, yeah and uh it uh it, i mean it's very fast acting i mean there's been people that have driven up from uh, from galveston to to uh houston and having to have their arm or leg amputated to save their life it is a very fast moving it's pretty scary it is it's very yeah, scary it's- so whenever you started mentioning salt water fishing i immediately thought about these uh, these poor people that uh, have to go through this so hence the question all right, so wow. uh, I, can't... I haven't heard of that one. I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, neither have I. Flesh eating virus. Well, that's interesting. I, I I didn't realize it was such a uh, localized type thing. Uh, we hear about it, like I said, maybe once or twice every uh, every few years. Uh, it, it may happen more often, but usually it's a very newsworthy thing. Well, I think we've covered all the bases, Tammy. We know uh, when the event's going to be. We know where they're located. Yeah. We know how to contact them on uh, social media, Facebook. Uh, say that Facebook page one more time for us, Brian. It's a. Uh, it's just on the group section of Facebook. If you just go to Facebook and search for Carolina Trails Off Road, or it's Facebook four slash groups four slash Carolina Trails Off Road. Yeah, best thing to do is just like uh, Brian's saying, just do a search, search. Uh, Carolina yeah. Trails Off Road, and it's a uh, off hyphen road, correct? I think in a search engine, you just it's all together. If you don't do it all together, yeah. you won't find it. Ah, there we go. That's uh, that's exactly what One we needed word, to yeah. hear. I would love to come up there. Um, maybe next year I can put it on my calendar and I could head up there and we could do some interviews, Tony, and some videos. And it's that'd nice be a good that time. It's nice that you're over there on the East Coast. That's fairly close yeah. for you, isn't it? I think it's. I think I looked it up, and it's. I, it would be a seven-hour drive for me. It's only about halfway to Rosh. I mean, uh, only. Uh, Half uh, or twice as far as going to Rosh. Right, Creek. right. It's worth it. We. I'm sorry, Ryan. Try it again. Oh, say it again. I was gonna say we 
we've got some really good trails. Um, a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. Uh, JK Experience was at Rim Rock. Um, they, they, their trails are just really good. They're, they're, they're really well known. You never see the same trail. You could wheel Wind Rock for a week straight and never run the same trail. So let me, oh my goodness. Let, let me ask you one more question before we wrap up, Brian. What would you say the predominant color of the Jeeps or the vehicles out there is? Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Uh, you guys have heard of Myrtle Beach, right? Say it again. So Myrtle Beach is kind of like our – Myrtle Beach and Charleston are kind of like our touristy melting pot areas. Okay. And you can see some wild color Jeeps out there. I don't know that there's really one prominent one. I think when someone has a new color, someone goes and gets a custom one made just so they can be different. I um, see. There you go. <laughs> you get closer in, get closer inland, you, you'll see a lot of a lot of black Jeeps. And all. I think the huh. black fads go on where everybody's getting black rims and um, blacking everything out, and everybody wants a black Jeep or a white Jeep with black all over it. And, a lot of that too well you know what they say about black jeeps right don't no 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 What's that? black there. jeeps are so depressing yeah they- oh tony <laughs> tony oh i'm gonna have to contact josh uh and you know they uh you know what they say when they see a jeep right no oh it's What's a that? jeep yeah it's black <laughs> Them spiting words. <laughs> All right, Brian. Well, thank you very much for being oh, a guest here with us tonight and putting up with some of our shenanigans. Yeah, thanks, Brian. We appreciate you doing Hey, I us. appreciate y'all having me. Thank you. All right. Well, that's Brian over at uh, Carolina Off-Road, and you guys need to check it out. You at least need to go check out their uh, their Facebook page. I mean, I know if you're in California, that's not very likely you're going to be driving or flying all the way over there you could you certainly can because they're open for anybody being there nice family environment tammy uh that, that welcome welcomes everybody he didn't say anything about uh non-xjs or non-renegades i mean he even had a, yeah. a colorful story about a renegade uh, that yeah. uh, I, I just can't imagine getting clay inside the intake goodness that had to be a, yeah. a, just a mess been nasty i would love to be able to go um to north carolina and go wheeling with them well it's may you know you start yeah, now it's only seven hours i know <laughs> i just have to check my calendar out oh you could do it yeah i just spent probably two thousand dollars tonight on some jeep stuff so oh good is it something my, you can tell my, us about or do we have to wait oh it's my jeep trip i'm taking in may so oh i thought it was parts or something no no two thousand dollars in parts that would be Probably some hefty parts. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, long arm, cl- long arm kit yeah. or something, wouldn't it? Yeah, the Clayton long arm. Yeah, I've only had my lift for a couple months, and I've decided to upgrade. See, that's the problem with me thinking about taking a trip or buying something that I'll have for a long time. And I always go with the stuff that I'm going to have for a long time. I would have gone with Jeep parts on that, Tammy. That's just me. I mean, you can do whatever you want, of course. Oh, I'm going to have so much fun. I can't wait. Now, that's the navigation thing, right? The uh... No, no. I'm going um, to Moab. And it... I'm going to go wheel the, the desert in Moab. But you're not taking... Hell's Revenge. Yeah, but you're not, not taking a, your not Jeep, my right? Jeep. Yeah, that's... Not on my Jeep. See, that's, that would be the downside to it to me. Yeah, it's, it's on my bucket list for me to do it. it I would have to take a good to week and a half off yeah. just to drive there it, for to drive alone there it would take me two or three days you need a, a truck and a trailer yeah well even driving that it's still it's just i don't have i don't have enough vacation time to do it that way right well just tell those so, people they can take their job and shove it and then come back yeah. and say i'm sorry i was drunk my blood sugar was I low know. can i have my job yeah back? i was cr- <laughs> i was high <laughs> Well, folks, don't forget, every Tuesday night, we're here on the Jeep Talk call-in show, taking calls. We're looking for guests. You want to join us, um, shoot us an email at info at jeeptalkshow.com, and we'll have you on. And Tony, myself, and Josh, we will be here every Thursday night at 10 o'clock Central, where we do the Jeep Talk show. And this week, gosh, I don't know what we're going to talk about this week. 
Um, I guess you'll have to tune in to find out. We all have to tune in to um, find out. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> the snowstorm just messed with my head. I'm. I uh, you were. Plan. You were all excited. You were all dressed up yeah. and no place to go. I wanted to test out those new um, Goodyear Dura tracks in the snow, but didn't get to test them out. Well, you know, gee whiz, it's March. I think it's about time for the snow to be over. Maybe next year, Tammy. Maybe. All right. Well, you guys have a great uh, Jeep week, at least till Thursday, and uh, you'll make it even better by joining us over at the Jeep Talk Show, 10 p.m. Central Time, every Thursday night. Uh, like Tammy said, Josh, Tammy, and myself will be there and uh, uh, having the the big time uh, Jeep Talk Show show. But uh, we will see you then, and uh, have a great night, Tammy. Great job. Yep. See you guys later. Night. 